Hi, my name is Gustav Kuhn. I'm a lecturer in psychology at Brunel University and I'm one of the authors of a paper entitled How Magic Changes Our Expectations About Autism, a paper we've recently published in Psychological Science. Now, illusions lie at the heart of magic and many of them rely on strategically manipulating people's expectations about what is going to happen. Now, one such illusion is the vanishing ball illusion. And rather than just describing the illusion, I'll give you a quick demonstration. Now the way this trick is done is that rather than throwing the ball for real, the magician pretends to throw the ball when in fact it's secretly palmed inside his hand. Now the interesting thing about this illusion is that although the ball doesn't leave the magician's hand on the final throw, most participants claim to see a ball leave the hand and then move up towards the top of the screen. So this is a very nice example of how people can be made to see something that has never taken place. Now our previous work has shown that the effectiveness of this illusion is greatly influenced by the magician's social cues. Because if the magician is looking at the hand, rather than following the imaginary trajectory of the ball, the effectiveness of this illusion is greatly reduced. Also, although most participants claim that they're keeping an eye of the, on the ball, the eye tracking data has shown that people spend most of their time actually looking at the face which suggests that the visual system is actively making use of the social cues. Now there are several reasons to predict that one group of individuals, namely those with Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, may be less susceptible towards the illusion. Individuals with ASD have an uneven profile of abilities. They have intact or superior skills in various non-social areas such as the processing of fine details but are impaired in other areas such as attending to social elements of the environment. Now as the misdirection relies on social cues we would expect individuals with autism to be less misdirected and therefore less susceptible towards the illusion. Now the superior processing of local detail that is associated with ASD suggests that individuals with ASD would be more efficient at detecting the ball than individuals without ASD and may therefore be less inclined to use top-down strategies in interpreting what they see. This means that individuals with ASD should therefore be less susceptible towards the illusion. Now the aim of our study was to investigate individuals with ASD's susceptibility towards the vanishing ball illusion. So what did we do? Participants were asked to watch a video clip of the vanishing ball illusion whilst having their eye movements monitored using an eye tracker. Participants were merely asked to try to discover how the trick was done. Our sample consisted of 15 high-functioning individuals with ASD and our control group included 18 typically developing individuals. Now contrary to our predictions, our results showed that individuals with ASD were not less but in fact more susceptible towards the illusion. Now the eye movements revealed that individuals in the ASD group spent the same amount of time looking at the face and the eyes, which suggests that they've got typical social processing. Moreover, most of the participants in both group immediately fixated the face. However, individuals with ASD were much slower to do so. We also found a very interesting result with regards to the time they spent looking at the ball because participants with ASD spent significantly less time looking at the ball. And whilst control participants typically fixated the ball when it was up, up in the air, individuals with ASD failed to do so.
And it's this failure to actually look at the ball when it was up in the air, which may explain the higher level of susceptibility in this group. So what do we conclude? Well, contrary to our predictions, individuals with ASD were more, not less, susceptible towards the vanishing ball illusion. Now these results challenge existing explanations of social attention difficulties and enhanced visual processing of fine detail in ASD. Importantly, our results provide new evidence about the temporal allocation of, of attention. Individuals with ASD may have particular problems in timing the allocation of attention. Indeed, our results suggest that participants in the ASD group have severe difficulties in fixating the moving ball, and this failure in looking at the ball may account for the higher level of deception in this group. Now, more generally, these results suggest that when faced with complex situations, Individuals with ASD have particular problems in allocation and allocating attention towards the right place at the right time.